Hey, I'm Pastor Goodman, and this is the Drive to School podcast. We're back. It's been a long summer, but uh, I'm here with uh, my, bu- my 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 good buddy, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, friend? It's good to see you, Harrison. Yeah, it's been a, been a good summer. So fun to catch up with you before we start recording here. So yeah, hear what's been going on, and uh, yeah, Labor Day weekend here coming up. So it's kind of the yeah, start packing. This the is days. the cutoff. Winter's, yeah, yeah, winter's coming, right? Fall. I should say fall. Fall's coming first, right? You got you guys skip that up there uh, in North Dakota, there, don't you? Do you actually get a fall? Uh, it's always 50, 50, uh, okay. you know, sometimes you get this wonderful October. It's my favorite season where he gets drug out, but sometimes bam, you just get hit, hit with snow in October. Cause I remember a couple of years ago, we got hit with October, uh, October, uh, snow it was like October 31st. Just remember Halloween. Um, we had snow and it stayed all the way till May 2nd. That was, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I need me some autumn. Uh, there, there's this, um, I, I, in this day and age, it's really hard to say it this way, but there's, there's this like, there's this white girl inside of me that, that just wants to come out. Um, I just, I want to wear a sweater and be cozy and, and drink hot <laughs> coffee. Um, and, and, and it has nothing to do with anything other than the aesthetic, but I'm here for the aesthetic. Um, <laughs> Nice. But uh, no, I'm I'm looking forward to you know uh, it it you said football season's up here, um, high school football in the in the fall is just the best, and so yeah 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 yeah. So I I I I should announce that after gosh I don't know how many years I decided to throw all my chips back in with the Minnesota Vikings, yeah. Ooh. So I, I gave up on them when Brett Favre threw the interception pass about a decade ago. So then I went back in with the Vikings. I got a bunch of members of my church who are Vikings fans. We have a, a Pastor Richard emotional support group here. Uh, when I'm... <laughs> you ready for the season? Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess sort of on that note, uh, I think we were going to say, what does Jesus say about being defiled? Uh... <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a cleaner transition than that. So, um, yeah, the, the, this sort of feeling of unclean, this this sort of accusation of being unclean. What is it that that defiles a person? Because there there is sort of this 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 inability sometimes to look at yourself in the mirror for feeling feeling shame, feeling guilt. There there are sort of accusations that as Christians, can you can you be around certain things? Can can you can you watch certain shows without becoming unclean? How do we start 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 to parse this without sort of either running to a monastery and, and sort of insisting that we can escape anything outside of the world? And how do we how do we look at ourselves too when when we have our own hearts, our own sinful flesh that that very much feels unclean? Yeah, I think I think First, okay, let's maybe start from this perspective. Let's just look at the world itself, right? And so we know uh, the catechism points out that we have three enemies. We have the enemy of the devil, obviously. That's that's a given. The devil is an enemy, so he's over there. Uh, we also have our sinful nature, which we'll get to, which is right here. And we have the world. And so the, the ideas of the world, the ideologies of the world, and so forth, what the world produces, the pagan world is often not good. Now, As you mentioned there, uh, one of the things we can do is we can run and create a monastic lifestyle where we cut ourselves off from every single thing. Now, in a way, in a way, there's a sense where we can admire that, you know, because we don't want to participate with darkness. And there are things in this world that we uh, definitely want to oppose. But the fact of the matter is that uh, no matter how much that we cut ourselves off, the point that we can make today is you still have an escape, escape the defilement because that defilement is right here. And so let's just say, you know, Harris and I were, you know, you and I were successful. We, 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 we decided maybe we're going to go buy some land in North Dakota, or maybe we'll meet maybe South Dakota. Right. And then we put a big fence around it and we get everything out of the world outside of it. And then I can give you a high five and say, Hey, we did it. We're, we're free from defilement. No, we're not (laughs) because the defilement it's followed us. We, we brought it with with me wherever I go. Yeah. So, okay. But, 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 with that in mind, we, we also can't just say, well, I have defilement with me, so therefore uh, it doesn't matter what the world, it I can do whatever matter. I want. And so so we we have to parse that. And so we want mm-hmm. to parse that. Uh, definitely, we're not of the world. Uh, definitely, we're baptized into Christ. We belong to Jesus. We've been purchased from darkness unto light. We've been purchased not with gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Jesus. So we don't belong to the world. But yet we're still in the world because we have vocations. You know, uh, we're plumbers, we're students, we're, um, you know, uh, we're farmers, we're bankers, we're teachers. We're still in the world in our vocations. And at the same time, too, if we're successful in separating ourselves from the world, we still haven't arrived at freedom from defilement because it's right here. And again, we carry it with us. 
And so as long as we sort of let this this sort of be the, the mark of, of, of avoiding the extremes, it lets us start to look not just for the middle ground, but for something that'll work because neither of these will. You're right on either extreme. It, it, it's not, it's going to fall apart. If we run to the extreme of like, how can we hide from our, our neighbors or anything that might be in the world that would defile us, we end up abandoning our vocations. And quite frankly, it doesn't work because out of the heart comes evil thoughts and then a big long list of things I'm ashamed to talk about in front of my pastor. Um, but if, if we somehow just sort of say, well, if I'm baptized into Christ, none of it matters, then I, I, I lean too far into the things of the world. And, and well, does that help me in my vocation either? Um, because now, now um, it, I, I'm engaging in things that, that make me a worse husband, a worse neighbor, a worse pastor, a worse father. And um, we, we sort of end up sort of, again, taking our eyes off of Jesus in both cases, either one, because we think that we are by ourselves can avoid defilement or, or one, because we have said, well, since we've got Jesus, none of it actually matters anyway. And the stuff that Jesus had to die for because it was so serious, it doesn't matter at all if I do it. Um, there's got to be something else, right? Yeah. Well, and then to maybe back up just briefly, you know, what Jesus says in Mark 7, he says, out of the heart, the defilement comes. And so then mm -hmm. we look at uh, from the evil, from the human heart, the evil interests, um, the evil intentions, excuse me, fornication and theft and murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, and so forth. Um, all of this comes from where it comes from here. And frankly, there's no bottom to this. And I, you know, I've talked to a couple of my members here the other day, and one of my members said, you know, he goes, I understand how sinful I am, but I, I thank God. I thank God that he hasn't revealed just the bottom of the barrel of my sinfulness because if I saw all this and I would commit my entire life, I'd probably drop over dead. And so God has been gracious to me uh, in helping me understand um, and being patient with me and so forth. And so mm -hmm. to understand point. to understand that that right here, there's no bottom to this, which then, okay, then what do we do? Then, then, then do we try to create a monastic lifestyle with ourselves. Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, what, you know, try to push all that down and do a bunch of good things to help offset. I mean, we run to Jesus is, which is what you just said, you know, with everything. And so we run to Jesus uh, and we find our identity in Christ as we carry the sinful nature around our neck and around our body and the sinful nature with us the rest of our lives until we depart in peace in Christ. Uh, but we live in Christ in the same things with the world. As we as we work in the world through our vocations, we walk as baptized Christians, walking into the works that he has prepared in advance for us to walk in. It's a really good point that sometimes God in his mercy hides from us the depth of our own sin. I'm, I'm really glad that we don't belong to a, a denomination that says you have to confess every sin by name or it can't be forgiven. Um, because like just to heap it all out there, Lord, I'm, I made a mess of things. And honestly, some of it I need to learn from. It, where, where you can use this to curb in my sin, please do so. Where you can use this as a mirror to, to make me realize that I need you, please do so. But I... I've dealt with with people who who have struggled with depression. I, I myself have had some real low lows where if all you see are the things that you break, if, if you're convinced that there's you you actually start to see the depth of your sin, you you get to start to do the math in a really ugly way that it would be better for the world if I were not here. It would be better for my neighbor if if I just killed myself. And, and it's a terrible expression to say. And if this is something that you are pondering, please talk to your pastor, talk to your family and get help. But also recognize that God in his mercy, um, he doesn't want you to simply spend the time digging for the depths of your own heart. But he says, instead, fix your eyes upon the cross and know this is a place where you are made clean, where you are not defiled. And, and, and what's what's utterly miraculous is that he can take every single one of us who does not know the depth of our own sin and still work good through us. Um, so even out of the heart that come all of these things, God would still, by, by grace, um, drown old Adam and daily raise up a new man in your baptism that would actually love your neighbor, that would actually dare to live inside of your vocation as if God could accomplish good things through it. Even while you struggle to know the depth of your own sin, God actually begins to start to say, I'm going to show you the depth of my love. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I've heard it said before, and I just... It's so good. I just, it just, it's so good to hear. There's more grace in Christ than there's sin in us. Mm -hmm. I just, oh, it just, it just, I, 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 I repeat that over and over. There's more grace in Christ than there's sin in us. Now that, now obviously that's not a, a license for us to sin by any means. Mm -hmm. It's not that we keep on sinning that grace may abound. I mean, by no means, but when we fi find ourselves realizing it's just like, man, there again, my old Adam showed me something new and I, didn't think I was going to be able to sin that way, but boy, I spun it that way and uh, <laughs> God have mercy on me and to realize, and, and, and he forgave me for that one too. And there's enough mm -hmm. grace in Christ to forgive me for that sin there as well. And so 
I think that the reality of the world, when we the world that we live in, when we see the trickery of the world and the falsehood of the world, we run to Christ as we were as we walk in this world. When our sinful old Adam and the bottom of the defilement of this this heart that is despicably evil and uh, uh, cannot do anything right, when we witness yet again the defilement of our heart, it's back to Jesus as well. And so, I, you know, it's it's almost like we're a broken record. Uh, Harrison, you know, Jesus over and over and over, uh, which is the only solution, the only hope um, that we have. I mean, as Hebrews says, what uh, we, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, the beginning of our faith and the perfecter of our faith. And so it's not Jesus and then move on to greater and better things or Jesus and move on to what, um, you know, more independence in myself and more spiritual go-go juice within myself. No, it's Jesus uh, in my baptism being snatched in Jesus and abiding in him. Uh, every single day um, as the pastor proclaims it, as you hear the gospel for yourself, as you feast upon his word, as you go to the Lord's table, it's Christ over and over and over every single day abiding in him. And we need to be told, fix your eyes on Jesus every day, because over and over again, we, we go back to fixing our eyes on our own bellies. We, we fix our eyes on our own. And this is where the, the talk of defilement all starts to come around is because you're staring at yourself. Um, and, and in all of it, uh, you are pure in Christ. And so you get to lift your eyes up to the cross and then through that even get to see that you have a neighbor. Um, so when it comes to then, how do we how do we deal with defilement before our neighbors? We actually just get to say, well, in my baptism, I am pure. And I have been made pure that, that I would be pure, uh, first of all, just simply to receive this because God wishes me to have it. But then uh, in my, my vocations, I don't have to worry. Um, uh, about whether or not something can make me unclean. Instead, I get to say, would this make me a better or worse? And then insert your vocation. Would watching yeah. this show make me a better or worse pastor, a better or worse husband, a better or worse father, a better or worse student? Would going to that website, you know that website, make you a better or worse spouse someday down the line? And, and then it's not that it can make you unclean before God. In Christ, all things are pure. Your sin is forgiven. It is so forgiven that even that is forgiven. But at the same time, now when you're living in Christ, are the things that you're leaning into going to hurt your neighbor or help your neighbor? You're taken care of. Fix your eyes on Jesus and hear it over and over again. But but also recognize that if sin breaks stuff, that that's not license then to run and break more stuff, but but rather pull your eyes away from your own belly, stop measuring yourself and look to Jesus. And, and then from there, the rest starts to take a shape. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't say it better. Can't say it better. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, in God Christ. Be praised. Yeah, God be praised for Jesus. Good way to start off the uh, school year here. I like Hearing it. about Christ, right? For us. Uh, more Every... grace in Christ than there's sin in us. Amen. Pastor Matt Richard, thank you uh, so much for being with us here. Yep. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Take care, my friend.